Hi, it's Frigid. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. I am so looking forward to doing this channel because it actually came to me on my way back from a trip that I was taking. I had the opportunity to watch a movie on the airplane and a movie that I wouldn't have probably normally watched. And it was the movie about Judy Garland. And so in a way, I guess my trip inspired me to connect and do another channeling session with Judy Garland in the afterlife. So let's talk with her. Now, Judy Garland also has a playlist here at Above Life Channel, so check it out. I've actually been to the museum, her hometown in Grand, uh, Grand Rapids, Minnesota. And so you can check out the video where I filmed that and shared that and also two additional like channeling that I have done with Judy Garland. I am going to utilize some of your questions to jumpstart this session. So I'm going to grab my computer and read some of your questions that you have submitted um, for me to ask for Judy to me for me to ask Judy. All right. So let's do that <clears throat> and ask for Ms. Garland to please come to the stage. Ms. Garland, please come into the stage. Hi, Judy. She says, hello, darling. And she like, oh, like, like kiss kind of a thing. Just like one little kiss kind of thing. You feel different. She says, because I am different. Because you're different, she says, because you're different. You definitely have a persona, a public persona that you can really channel yourself, like manage yourself, it feels like, Judy. And over the course of the time that you and I have um, connected, I have felt different aspects of you and your personality. So I am hoping to be able to continue to build upon our connection, our relationship, and to share some with the viewers who are interested in, in finding out more about you, Judy, from your afterlife perspective. Are you ready for some questions? Oh, sure, she says, oh, sure. All right, the first set of questions comes from S Sherry. And I'm not sure where Sherry's from. Oh, from Canada, Sherry from Canada. All right, so Judy, oh, this is perfect. I haven't actually read the questions <laughs> and I just read the first one. I'm like, yes, this is exactly the kind of thing that I wanna know. Good job, Sherry, on your questions. All right, Judy, this is about the movie, the movie. I love it when the synchronicity lines up, awesome. Okay, so the question from Sherry is, what are your thoughts of the recent Renee Zellweger portrayal of you and the Academy Award for that portrayal in 2020? So what do you think about the movie? Um, I want to know that. But Sherry wants to know specifically about Renee Zellweger and how she portrayed you. How do you feel about that? And she says, oh, she did all quite, she did quite all right. She did, didn't she? She did it. She did it. Uh, um, she's like a bang up job. She did, she did, uh, she did well is what she's saying, but she's like, oh, she's like enthusiastic about it. <laughs> Judy's like enthusiastic about it. Yeah, 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 like that kind of a thing. She says, um, I was impressed. I was impressed. You, you know, she didn't sing. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, expect an actor or actress to sing now in, in your generations. It, it's not... Uh, a jack of all trades sort of of um, a jack of all trades keep talking line of work the line of work back when I was creating movies it was much more of a performance and you had to be a singer and a dancer and now it seems as though that has a bit gone by the wayside and there's a bit more, um, there's a lot more things that are, are done behind the scenes or with, you know, special effects and things of, of that nature that, that enhances the performance. And so actors and actresses don't, do not really have to be full bodied performers. And those are some things from the earlier days of Hollywood that have, have been lost. That's not to say that that is something that is necessarily a bad thing because it does put a lot of demands upon a person's body to be able to just keep going and keep and to be able to 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 
do full out takes is something that is extremely exhausting. And maybe it is better now because an actor or actress does not have to do all of the things and it, it allows for maybe more balance or, or perhaps more perfectionism which could lead to some challenges personally for those individuals who are playing those parts to be more hypercritical, hypercritical of their own subtle um, performances, the subtle parts of the performances where the, the general audience wouldn't notice, but, but the actor, actress taking the craft very, very seriously would and maybe even obsess about that. Did you do that? Did you obsess about, oh yes, yes. I was always, I was always afraid to make a mistake and mistakes were not acceptable because it meant more film. It was more expensive. So the more mistakes you made, the more expensive it was. And so there was a lot of pressure from others who were waiting for you to get it right. And all of these people relied upon you in order to make their own living for their families. And that's a great deal of pressure on a person on one individual it is a great deal of pressure so what do you feel about renee zellweger specifically so so it says she did a bang up job she did a good job um do you feel that it was worthy of a an, of a, an academy award and she says all of the academy awards i find it quite Mm, intriguing that from the afterlife I have the opportunity to still be recognized in a way that is um, maybe even in a way of sorts uh, posthumously but I know my contributions and my worth worthiness now as I am now and I have the ability to reflect and to see life in a whole new way and understand the 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 many different parts and pieces of life I am much more better able to receive the the positive boost of energy from this this movie from this award and it doesn't mean much to me as I am not in need of anything like that in, in a tangible sense, in a material way, but it pleases me that the actress who worked very hard to become me the best way that she could, I'm pleased at that. I'm, I'm pleased with that. Mm -hmm. Is there someone else you would have picked for the, or chosen for the part? Would that you would have rather seen for the part? Is there, I'm curious about that. Is there anybody else that you would rather? She's throwing me a young, a brunette. Um, you know what it looks like? Ashley Judd. It kind of looks like Ashley Judd. Um, I don't think she's, I don't think she comes, Ashley Judd would come across old enough. Um, she looks so young to me. So Judy, I have to tell you, okay, and you guys, you have to listen to this. So, um, so Judy died when she was 47. It said that on the end of the um, movie, um, and I'm 47. I just turned 47 in February. And so I'm like, ooh, maybe that's like a connection piece for us. For me to even think about my own mortality and for life to be done now, I can't even imagine. Like, like Judy, your life, your body of work is so, it's like many lifetimes. It feels like you died when you were 90 or 95 because there's so much music and, and performances and stage performances and dance and, and, and just, and film that you have such a body of work that so exceeds your years on earth. And she said, and that's not a good thing. I wouldn't brag about that. I wouldn't feel that that was something to boast about. It, it seems like a lot of hard work and a lot of suffering that created such a large amount or a volume of work in a short amount of time, which it does not seem fair, does it? it does It hardly seems fair, does it? And no. 
It doesn't. Judy, I think your life and your experiences, the, the horrible treatment that you suffered as a child actress, not only from other actors, actresses from the film industry types, the producers and the, the big higher ups, and also from your own mother, that kind of pressure and, and abuse and mistreatment, it, it, it's sort of the, the reason why all, many of us are like, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be famous. None of us want to have that. Like it's not worth, fame is not worth that kind of pain. And so like your life is held up kind of like a, yeah, if you want to be famous, you have to go through a lot in order to be that. It's not worth it is how, how we see it. And I just have a different perspective of, of you and connecting with you as we've connected now. This will be our third channeling session together. And I'm, I'm, I'm evolving in my perspective and understanding of you and your, your life. And so I just have, a, I guess I have an appreciation for that. I just need to say that. All right, so let's ask more questions from Sherry. Oh, Judy, you passed, passed so young. Okay, I did not read these before. I just looked them up so that they'd be on my computer screen so I could make them really big so I didn't have to wear my glasses while I'm channeling, okay? But I didn't read them. So I love how they're in, in alignment, right? So the next question is, you passed so young, Judy, I got the impression you were tired. Was your death an exit point and part of your contract? So the whole question here is um, soul, dealing with soul contract, the assumption that um, some people assume, I think, that you have an exit point. We, when we incarnate, we decide when we're going to leave. Um, that's not necessarily true, you guys. Everything's written in pencil, in my experience. And uh, life is not a detailed contract that our destinies are charted. We co-create that. We might have an outline coming in with bullet points, and then we fill in the text of that incredible paper of our lives. And so you have lots of opportunities and choices for exit points. So was this one of them? Yes. She says, yes. If it wasn't, I would not have left. Now would I? Was it too soon? No, not too soon. No, no. Far, far too long. She says, far, far too long. <laughs> too long. Too long here. So you had attempted suicide or had brushes with death? Pre yes, previously, yes. And it looks like multiple times. And so... Sherry says that she got the impression you were tired. Is that true? I was sad. I was very sad. And, and yes, I'm sure I was tired. It, but it was more that I didn't feel as though things could get better. Now, whether that's true or not, that will not be known. Was it my time? I'm not in a position to say that it was, but clearly with a, a transition, with leaving the body, there is a great deal of contemplation that goes along with that and the very process of it. It's not as easy as one might think, wherein we are accountable for our own choices and the manner of our transition is, is in part negotiable. And for me, it, there's no sense to look back. There's no sense in, in, in the looking back on things. I feel as though I caused a great deal of suffering or pain in my life. I passed it on to my children. And because of that, life was quite intolerable at times. But I do not blame anyone for that. I do not blame my mother or the studios or the agents or the people who lived up off my legacy, my legendary money, my reputation, my fame. I held a great deal of anger in my pain and yet, pain was all I, I, I could remember. 
And it might be sad for me to say that to you, for you to hear that, but that is the, the reality for me. I would say that sadness, sadness is what I felt the most overwhelming sadness at that point. A deeper faith than loneliness, a sadness that just couldn't be shaken. It always seemed to come back. Whew, that was a lot, you guys. <clears throat> Another question. These are fabulous questions, by the way. Thank you, Sherry, from Canada. Liza, your daughter, one of your children, went on to have a fabulous and successful career. Do you cheer her on from spirit as well as your other children? Of course I do, darling. I have grandchildren, you know. I have grandchildren as well. I feel that as a parent, I did my best but I fell short and I know this, I know that. There is no, no um, loss of accountability for that. I, of course, wish the best for them, for my family, but it is hard. It is a struggle to be in the shadow of someone so famous. I can only imagine how challenging that would be for my children, my family, to always have comparison is extremely difficult. And you know, at times they compared me to my daughter, to Liza, Liza and I, more like sisters instead of mother, daughter. And in a way I was frozen in many ways, frozen. There were expectations placed upon me that were completely ridiculous. And yet I bought into those myself to stay forever youthful, to have a career. We had to be young and beautiful and not just talented. The men, of course, had it much easier than the women. And so my daughter was a bit of a competition or comparison for both of us. Neither one of us, it was healthy, but we did the best we could with our relationship. And it, I wouldn't say it was great, but it was good, although dysfunctional as it may be. There was always love with me, from, from me to my children, although I couldn't necessarily express it in the way that I wanted to. And it may not have come across that I was loving. In fact, they may have felt me much more cold, especially than what was presented in the movie. It wasn't quite like that. It was much more received in a colder way, like um, as though I, I trying to protect them from me, from any harm that I could do to them and yet um, feeling incredibly lonely when I was separate from them. But, that, but that's how it had to be to keep them safe and healthy. And it's difficult to really talk about that, that part of my life as a person. There's a lot of healing there. Okay, you guys, I can feel her so strong, like so strong, like right here, like right in front of me strong. And she's acknowledging healing and that healing is a process. It's not something that, it's not as though she's like agonizing in the afterlife. There's no sense of that kind of feeling like that or being held back, but there's this, almost like this, um, it looks like a, a cycle, like a circular spiral symbol and screen of healing energy moving and flowing, and there's that. And so when you ask Sherry, you asked about her family, her children specifically, that that's what, that's what comes through and that's what she projects here is the healing is happening. So with both of them, with all three of her kids and grandchildren and such, um, the healing is happening. So she's acknowledging that and being part of that from the afterlife, she is definitely part of that. And it's very green, which is healing, energy connected to the heart space. That's how I see, sense, and feel that. All right, okay, so, okay, we're getting, oh, we're getting up here in our timing. So let's jump on. There's other questions too. There's a couple more questions I'd like to get to, but let me, um, let me just make sure I get um, Maya, Maya Martinez. Let's see. 
Maya. I don't know where you're from, Maya. Oh, Long Beach, California. Hi, Maya from Long Beach, California. Judy, we have some questions from Maya. And one is, let's see. What do you love most about your fans? Now, I saw there's some parts in the movie that show a couple of your fans and how you like were hanging out with them and that kind of thing. I'm sure it's just it, part of the movie script, but that feeling of their just genuine love for you. So how do you feel? Um, what, do you, what do you love most about your fans? Great question, Maya. Their commitment. They are committed, aren't they? They are so devoted. Aren't they devoted? I do feel that they've been misled. And if they are focusing on me as a child, there is so much more to my life to my human existence than simply that and the body of work that I have. If they enjoy my music, that is the closest they will be to the truest form of me. Not as much an actress as you might think, a, a, a singer, a performer, entertainer, yes. And I would, the response would be, I love their commitment. I love their love. That it's pure. It, it's pure. It's pure. All right. Great question. Out of all the movies you made, what was your favorite? She says it was not The Wizard of Oz. It was not. That might be the one, the most popular one, but it's not, I don't even know your movies. There's a movie, she's showing me a movie with, I think it's Mickey Rooney. No, there's an older man. Okay, um, sh an older man that's quite a bit taller than her. Is it like a Clark Gable or somebody? Or a Cary Grant or somebody? I don't know who it is. Uh, I can't tell who that is. I don't see who that is. Um, I'm kind of seeing the movie poster, but I can't see the words. It's like a farm situation or something. There's like a farm. I think it's a farm. There's two. I think there's two. They're mixed together. So there's an older gentleman and there's her. And then um, she just looks so young, though. That's the hard thing. Is it's hard to take... It's hard to see her as like this beautiful leading lady, like an Elizabeth Taylor type when she seems so young. Um, Cary Grant or Clark Gable is the vibe I get. I don't know for sure. But then I see Mickey Rooney too with her and I don't know what that's about. Um, like I said, I think they're mixing together and I can kind of see the text, but I can't quite make out the words great something or gate something or g something g on the the poster and um i don't know what what this is i much prefer music she's saying i much prefer music i much prefer music and it's like checkered tablecloths, like like red and white checkered tablecloth. I don't know what this is, you guys. I think there's two movies that she's showing me, and I, I don't know what they are. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I can't get this. I just don't see her as a teenage heartthrob. I just don't, oh, I don't know if they tried to present her as that and it didn't work out, so then they put her into something else. Um, I see her super dramatic. Like, oh, I like really acting a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't know what these two are, you guys. I don't know. There's two, but it's not The Wizard of Oz. Okay. Um, there's one later, like, funny, not funny girl, that's not, but there's one later on, too, where she's much more mature, and she's like, it shows her as like a, an actress that is like more mature and more in control of things, not so dramatic and overacting and that, and it's like black and white. Um, I don't know if the poster was black and white or she had black black on and I don't know what the deal is with the contrast, but um, that, I see that too. Um, is it great breakfast? No. 
break. I don't know. I'm not sure what this is, you guys. I can't. Can't do this one. All right. So what's the next? Let's see. Um, let's ask this. Let's wrap on this question. This is a great question. All right. So have you reincarnated now? And if so, where and whom are you? No. She says no. No, 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 no. She said, I would not tell you. If I had, I would not tell you because I don't feel that it would be something that would be fair to the individual or the person as I would become or welcome a new life. I am not currently reincarnated. No, it's not out of the question, no. Something I have considered. You guys, it actually looks like... Uh, it almost looks like she had an opportunity to, but she said no, she declined. She's not intending to come back into the same family. And... would like an assignment that would be interesting for her. Would you like to sing again? I think that's a natural thing, but as far as being famous, I don't see that as part of uh, a life plan that I would want to pursue. I don't think so. Mm. It might be lovely to be a famous writer or an author or, or that kind of a thing, to be a creative, as he would say, but I, I don't have any specific plans to come back. But that could change. So, thank you. Awesome, you guys. Awesome. Gosh, I don't know what the movies are. I'm sorry. Um, go ahead and post that below in the comments, you guys. Fill it in, viewers. That's what we do here at Above Life Channel. It's not all Bridget doing everything. You guys can fill in the blanks in the comments below. What movies do you think that, based on my weird descriptions of what I was seeing, the parts of what I was seeing, um, Go ahead and fill those in the comments below because I'm curious now. I have no idea. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what we come up with, right? All right, you guys. Thank you so much, Ms. Judy Garland, for being here for this third channeling session. We're actually recording this in March 2020. Thank you for being here at Above Life Channel. If your spirit is inspired, make sure you click like. And don't forget to subscribe to Above Life Channel so you never miss a new weekly channeling session. I appreciate it so much. Remember, the purpose is always to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope, because it's your life. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.